uh, we will not go over Thomas C's impressive CV that many of you may be already familiar with, uh, but we would like to tell you why we believe that it is very important to have Thomas here today. So there are several reasons for Algorra to have invited Thomas. Some of these reasons include Thomas's approach to making art politically, as opposed to making political art. We are also interested in how Thomas communicates about his work. And we think that this is particularly pertinent for us. I think that most of us here are artists today, or people connected to the arts. So we are really interested in the way that Thomas communicates about his work, that is usually happens uh, with language, with uh, uh, verb language and written language. <coughs> we appreciate some of his qualities that are not too common in contemporary arts, and this includes hard work and commitment as the basis of his artwork, giving as much as possible artwork as a platform either for dialogue or confrontation, his concept of non-exclusive audience, and the artist as a worker, soldier, or as a worker, warrior. His idea of art as a proactive instead of reactive expression, and his aim to achieve universality to his work, what he calls truth. So before we pass the word to Thomas, uh, we would like to let you know about the next events uh, that Maria has uh, described a little bit. Uh, the next one is in, on July 5th, and is um, political philosopher Professor Chantal Mouffe. Uh, the following is on September 22nd, and we'll be inviting uh, other French people. It's a curatorial duo from France, that is called the Deputy Monk. And then October 20th, uh, we'll have a philosopher and historian, Domenico Rosu. And uh, just a little note about Agorabra and something that may concern some of you. We are going to be in June at the Berlin at Art Book Fair uh, called Israel. If any one of you is interested in proposing publications, art publications for us to show in Berlin in June, please come and talk to us. We'll be showing our work and also a selection of uh, Norwegian work. Um, so we want to thank all of you for being here. And we want to thank Maria Kuznovskaya, the curator of Landmark, for hosting the series. And also want to thank our sponsors, the Norwegian Arts Council, the Berlin Arts Council, Free Tour, and in this case for Thomas Prohibition. So thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you, Franco, for these words. Uh, thank you, Agnes, Oscar, and uh, Franco for this invitation here. Yeah to come and to present my work, which I do with pleasure. You know, uh, you told about uh, how to communicate about the work. So, uh, to me, uh, uh, I do an artist lecture here. Yes. Uh, to me, it means uh, to try to clarify for myself first what I'm doing. And this, I try to share. So, as Branko told you, I wanted to present two works. Thank you. Um, the Gramsci Monument 2013 and the Flamme Network 2014. So work in public space, it's uh, something I love to do. I don't want to go into the details, only one which is specific to me and I wanted to, to uh, point out. Uh, when an artist can work in public space, it means always you have the free choice of the space where it's done. You know, when you are invited in a museum, the museum director says, oh, Thomas, we have the big space for you, or most often he says, we have the small space for you, or you have the east wing, or whatever. So the, the space is decided in the museum, in the gallery. But in public space, it's you, the artist, who can decide the space to interact. And this is something very important to me, to work in public space, and therefore, I really think it's a specificity I won't miss in all my work. 
So the Gramsci monument is the fourth of the little series of four monuments that I did. This was the first one, a picture of the Spinoza monument I did in 1999 in Amsterdam. The second one I made in 2000 in um, Avignon in the south of France in a group exhibition called the La Beauté. It, is, it was a monument dedicated to Gilles Deleuze. The third one I made in 2002 in, in Castle, dedicated to Georges Bataille. And then the, the last one dedicated to Antonio Gramsci. So this work uh, uh, was uh, a commission of DIA Art Foundation. And I was very happy that I could work with so powerful, so committed, and so uh, um, um, an engaging uh, organization like the DIA Art Foundation. To me, um, my ambition was, enduring the Gramsci monument, probably establish a new term of monument. To provoke encounters, to create an event, and to think Gramsci today. That was the, that was the, the goal for the Gramsci monument. Uh, as I told you, I want to, yes, to define a new time, a new term of monument. How can today a monument be? How a monument should be? So to me, uh, my idea is to create a new monument uh, and therefore I use four terms that I want to explain in my lecture. The location, the dedication, the duration and the outcome. The location, I already told you, is something I have to decide myself. And for me it's almost 50% of the whole work because it says everything where it is. So therefore, to me, to find the location for my work needs a lot of time. So this was the map I had when I started the Gramsci monument. It's actually the map of the New York Housing Authority. You know, in New York City, I mean in the five boroughs, Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island, the Bronx and Manhattan, there are 500,000 New Yorkers living in, in, uh, in public houses. So I thought, I made this decision. I want to work with people who live in a public house. 300,000 New Yorkers are waiting on a, for an apartment in this public house. So this was the list. And the, there are more than 300 public housings, I mean, uh, locations. So I went to 40 four of them to visit it in all of the far, four, five boroughs. So this work, of, I call it field work, was for about one and a half year, not every day. I went nine times for a week or ten days to New York in order to get to all these kind of, for, or to all of the 44 uh, public houses. But, of course, it's not about architecture, it's even not about Location is always about people. And even in this case, after having visited so a lot of uh, uh, public houses, I, I met these two persons, Diane Herbert and Clive Thompson. These two persons, they live, they live, they are living and they are working in the public housing forest houses in the South Bronx. And to meet these two people was to me Two persons was very important because uh, very challenging, challenging, uh, and also it was kind of a co uh, turning of uh, the field work I made before, and then to the realization of the project. So it's never, by the way, it's never about architecture. It's never about location. It's always about people. But of course, in order to meet people, I need the architecture. I need the locations. I need my map. Um, um, Diane and Clive, they're working in a community uh, center in Forest Houses. And uh, uh, when I came first time to present my, my project, or uh, the Gramsci Monument, they asked me, I always will remember, what will be the benefit for our community? And I'm very happy that I get the spirit clear enough to say, I'm not working for your community. I'm working for art. 
And so these people said, what? What? You don't want to work for our group? So this was the starting point of the discussion about the, uh, the ground shimmer. Mm -hmm. And therefore, because this was, since the beginning, a kind of harsh discussion about art and community and about what art can do. Therefore, the Gramsci monument was in forest houses. So what I always do, I try not to tell the people I will help them. I have not the pretension as an artist to help them. I have not the ability, I have not the competence to help. But what do I do, what I do, I ask for help. I ask Clyde and Diane, do you think you can help me to realize my monument? That is the question. To me, that's the cornerstone. Because these people can understand this. So what I did also, in order to understand why I need the help, I made a map. This is the ground you want to make. I carry it with me all the time. And I try to, to show the people that I have a plan. I have a plan, what I want. And even when it's very complex, that I know what I want. So this is a very good, it was a really useful tool for me. Uh, Clyde and, um, and Diane, two persons you saw before, they're working in an association. They are working every day. They are like, how can I say, uh, they're like uh, functionaries or they're working there all the time. So always I ask them for a key figure. A key figure, I, I was always always coming with an idea of a key figure. A key figure is somebody who has not specific task in, a, in, a, in the neighborhood, but who has a kind of, I can call it street credit. And thanks to uh, Clyde and also Diane, I, uh, I met this person. This person, Eric Farmer, he is, by the way, the president of the residents of Forest Houses, and of course Clyde and uh, I know him very well, they are friends with him, and at one moment uh, there was the possibility that I could meet Eric, and he get the key figure for the Gramsci monument. Without the key figure, it's not possible to do for me, and I was so happy that I could meet Eric because he understood uh, perhaps not my all my my uh, all my de all my uh, outcome of my project, but he understood that I had a project. It was beautiful then to work with Eric because he organized the level applied uh, meetings in the neighborhood in order to explain uh, the the Gramsci monument, the project Gramsci monument, and of course this key figure. Uh, it was so important because he was really every day, every single day on the front line, together with me to build um, uh, the monument. So Eric is somebody with a, a great, of course, uh, authority, and also uh, uh, he has he lives there with his family since more than 40 years. And also I was happy that I met him because he was involved in the beginning for the for the information of the neighbors, but then in the construction, but then also after in the in the in the duration of the monument, and also he organized himself, Evans and me and the DR Foundation could help him to to organize um, uh, his uh, his projects. So just in order to to work this out, it was very important to me to meet somebody like. Eric Farmer, the key person of the Gramsci Monument, the key figure of the Gramsci Monument. And this you can only, only do, I think, but because you are a lot there, you, you, you try to, yeah, you try, you try to convince, you try to explain your project, you, you try to be clear, you try to, to, um, um, to, to, to share your uh, uh, passion for art. Then the construction phase, of course, I asked Eric, you, can you build a group of people of the neighborhood? Um, um, they will be paid, they will be paid for what they are doing. It was very easy to constitute a group of people, 15 people. The only quality of the people was to, to be residents of forest houses. So this was the team. And together, in seven weeks, we built um, the Gramsci monument. 
So now I would like to show you some uh, structural parts, architectural parts of the Gramsci model. There was a ramp, there was a ramp, two bigger ramps, it was important to build access to it. There was a bridge because there were two parts of the Gramsci model uh, um, uh, cut it with a kind of uh, gangway, or, or not gang, uh, uh, throughway. And uh, there was a platform quite high, one and a half meter high, because I wanted that everything is on a platform, that everything uh, is uh, like an actor. And there was pavilions, that's an architecture structure, for to host uh, the events the events we 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 did. Um, then um, in the pavilions there were different activities. For example, an archive library with, of course, books and with uh, about Gramsci and from Antonio Gramsci. We built the structure and the books came from uh, a New York City-based library uh, the, from the uh, American um, Italian Society at, uh, based at CUNY University. So uh, the second thing very important of this new idea of monuments I have is that the monument, nobody asked me to do a monument about this or this person, so that the dedication to whom the monument is dedicated must come from me. Because I love Antonio Gramsci. Nobody needs to love him. The only dedication is me. It's not somebody who can tell me, please, Thomas, do a monument for this or this person. So it must be somebody I can only defend by love, the love I have for him. This is what I think is new and important uh, to me. And therefore, I, I understand my monuments as something who wants to make a new form of monuments. So Antonio Gramsci, I love him for a lot of reasons, but only because we have not a lot of time here. Uh, for, for example, he said, uh, quote, every human being is an intellectual. He wrote it in, in his prison article. And this reminds me to the beautiful word of uh, uh, Joseph Boyce, who said, every human being is an artist. So to me, of course, it means not that every human being owns money with being an intellectual, produces books, or is a professor in a university, but everybody has this capacity and this uh, self-understanding to think about even complex uh, uh, problematics. So in doing the, Gra the Gramsci moment, I went to, of course, I made also field work uh, towards Gramsci. For example, I was in Gilerza, in Sardinia, in this beautiful little house where he grew up with his family. And there is a small museum there. Um, and also I went to Rome in the Fondazione uh, Gramsci where the fantastic prison notebooks are preserved. And then I wanted also in the Gramsci monument to show my fieldwork and also yeah, I wanted to show some elements. Some, I can make a small exhibition about the life and the work of Antonio Gramsci. And for example, here on the, light, on the right and the left side, there are some items. These items, very simple, um, um, everyday objects, who belong to Antonio Gramsci, who were, um, uh, uh, who the Casa Gramsci in Giversa, which I visited, did um, loan to us. Then I made an internet corner, internet corner just in order to be connected connected to find out about Gramsci, but also to find out everything else, of course. Um, it was always very crowded, the internet corner. Then um, uh, we made a radio station, a low-power radio station, low, in America, low-power radio station, without any, um, 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 without any uh, permission. You can, for one and a half mile, you can make a low-power radio station, and also uh, uh, you can, of course, stream it in the internet, but free button, okay? Uh, but after you have made the PQ, and perhaps a lot of people don't know, of course, they don't, they don't want to go to my exhibition, they, they just go into it, so they pay already. So I want that absolutely, and therefore I show it to you, that in, this, in the beginning, from the entrance, that is clear, here you can go free, for free. That's the free file, okay? 
that's the free file because it's annoying or not good or free or whatever, I don't know. So this is the free file. And then, of course, you have to fight with all of kind of problems that you can imagine because I wanted them to do it uh, stupidly with tires to make kind of, you know, my idea was a kind of couloir. You have to go there until the end, and that's the only way. But of course, it was not possible because, for example, you cannot put the tire of the stairways. I just tell it to you how difficult it is, and not complaining, to work in institution. How you have to fight, you know, but not because it's about fight, but you know how the institution, in a way, of course, is is very powerful, and you, as an artist, is your idea, which. Perhaps it's a bad idea, I don't know. Perhaps it's a good idea, I don't know either. But you want to do it, and how you have to deal with this kind of problematics. For example, I couldn't put the tires, I couldn't make really this kind of down way, you know, to go into my work. So I had to find other solutions to make appeals like to these tires that there is uh, this way this much. But in the end, I really believe that it was free, was something very important, and to insist on this. On the, that when I'm present and when I'm there, and uh, that there is, can only be one possibility free. Because what I want is that the other people come also. And I want that they, they are there all the time. So they have not to pay again. It's clear for them. So then, just uh, some other experience I wanted to share. I invited 200 interventions, poets, writers, um, and uh, uh, um, uh, philosophers, but I don't know 200. So what we did, um, I asked friends, and then we made a kind of uh, pedigree. We call it pedigree because here you see, a little bit. so uh, a friend invites a friend, a friend invites a friend, a friend, a friend, and then of course it also had sometimes beautiful results, uh, but sometimes also some sometimes a little bit astonishing uh, conversation because people you didn't really directly invite. So you discovered them uh, because they were actually invited by other people. So this was another experience. I think it was interesting. This kind of uh, inviting uh, pedigree of inviting people, which you don't know. Who. And at the end of the of these 200 uh, in inviting people, because I wanted that the people uh, uh, who came to entertain the flame, um, they uh, they are between four and five people every day came. There were also some people, uh, very few, but there are some people who came by their own and make their own everyday intervention, like this lady on the, on the left side. Or uh, somebody who I in, invited, like uh, 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 Mrs. Uh, uh, Chiara Zocchi. She, she came then uh, after her first intervention every time and, made, uh, and participated. So uh, the most important, the, the new thing I tried to do with Flam HTML was no programmation. Because, by the way, all the pictures you saw, there was no timeline. So I tried something new. So I thought, OK, there will be not written at 4 o'clock there is uh, Jacques Ancier, or at 6 o'clock is uh, uh, Jean-Luc Nancy, or at uh, uh, 8 o'clock is uh, 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 Francoise Daubert. No, I didn't do it. I just, uh, I just asked them to come and uh, at the day. And uh, this is what I called no programmation. I didn't want that there is a program. I just want people to come and uh, entertain the frame at the moment they could. So this was a new experience because I believe in this experience. I completely believe. In it, uh, because I I wanted to to propose an, another new model like then the cultural consummation model, but of course it's a big problem because sometimes there were not a lot of people, lot of people there, and perhaps the person who performed or who made the lecture was uh, not happy or was thinking oh there are not a lot of people there, so I had to convince her or him and to explain. But also, it was interesting to know when you see, it, when you tell somebody, come when you want. You know, for example, a professor of a university, you tell him, come when you want. 
He don't come when he wants. He comes between seven and eight. This is the time he comes because or she comes because they think there are people there. So this was this is the work I have to to, to work out, you know, which I didn't accomplish. Uh, and uh, I show you this picture because this is one of them. And then I show you this picture. And here there are a lot of people, you know, but this is actually not what not function and what is function. Again, it's very important. This did function. Because this person did his lecture for to entertain the frame, and there were two or three people, including me, listening. He did his job, he accomplished his mission. And she, for example, this person, who, by the way, I like because she came spontaneous. She, <coughs> she by Facebook, organized all her friends and people, and then they came at 3 o'clock. So, a quarter an hour of three o'clock, there was a lot of people there waiting what happened. You know? And that's what I wanted to avoid. I just show it to you. This is not a picture of success, also not of complete failure, but more, in my mind, this is not what I wanted. To have people again informed of something like that. This leads us again to the big question. And more and more uh, artists today are under this pressure. I know it. Does it function? Does it work? Does people come, etc. And again, I can show you this great picture of the, the man, beautiful man, John Ignacy, who came. And by the way, he wanted the description. Ici, on peut entretenir la flamme, venir parler, on vous répondra. Means, in a way, here uh, you can uh, entertain the flame, uh, come and speak. Somebody will respond you. So this is was of course nice, or this is really easy. Of course, at the bar a lot of people came, or other. But also these people, these pictures are important. There were a few people, and these were even again like in the Gramsci monument. And I must insist, this was more than the half of the case. Empty chairs, not a lot of people there. And this doesn't mean that it is not working. It doesn't mean that it is a failure. It doesn't mean that, uh, that uh, it doesn't function. It means just that there was a mission, you know, the mission to entertain the flame. And the only question was, was the, was the flame entertained or not? <coughs> and it was. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Thomas. Uh, we are waiting for mics, unless this one works. Correspondences between the place and the person um, you ch choose. Is there one or what kind? Yeah, uh, there is no, there is no one. Um, because, uh, of course, in the South Bronx, when I went there about Gramsci, that's about, I think, your question, um, they didn't know him. But this is actually what I'm interested in to bring somebody who. Uh, who perhaps is to know. Um, this second, um, there are connections, of course. And that's the beauty of art and also the beauty of, world, of the world. For example, uh, uh, then people told me, yeah, but um, you know, we thought about Gramsci, we don't know, we, 
Yeah? But um, it was interesting, for example, Malcolm X, of course. You know, because also he was in prison. And also, you know, this kind of uh, uh, biography, the difficult biography of Gramsci was a connection to a difficult biography of, for example, Malcolm X. And you know, and uh, I, that's what I, I, I cannot say I'm expecting, I'm looking for, but what I believe. So, you know, I cannot go, me as a Swiss, I don't go to the Bronx and say, look guys, we do a Malcolm X monument. Or even when I love him, or a monument for Muhammad Ali, who deserves, in my mind, the monument. I don't go there. So I have to go with, with what I love. And this is the only thing. This is the only connection, what I love. And then there are connections who can be made. Um, for example, just a small one. There is, not in the Bronx, but it is in downtown Manhattan. There are the Gramsci, I, took, I mentioned it quite, uh, shortly. There are the Gramsci archives at the CUNY University. I didn't know this when I came to New York, for example. We learned it, and therefore they gave us the book. You know, the connections, I think they must be made. Uh, yeah, thank you for a wonderful presentation. Um, I wondered in the first project uh, why you chose a neighborhood of like social housing and uh, what would have happened to take the project in another kind of uh, neighborhood? Yeah, that I don't know, but because I always I, I try to say why I choose the public house. First, because I want to have fun. Okay? <laughs> Second, because yeah, 500,000 New Yorks lives in the houses. And to me, it's more representative in a way to do it in the South Bronx, in a public housing, than to do it on a high line. You know the high line in New York, in Burn Manhattan? Yeah. Or to do it on Park Avenue, where nobody lives. Yeah. So to me, the decision was, I want to do it where people are living. I want to do it with people are living, and then, of course, people in uh, social housing because so much of people lives in social housing. So to me, uh, this is the decision. Therefore, I told in the beginning, it's so important. And of course, as an artist, I'm not the whom who does anthropology. I don't go to another and tend to find out what is more interesting there and what is more. That's not my work, you know? So perhaps somebody else do it, do it does it. So perhaps there are artists, they do a work in public space, in front of the Rockefeller Center, you know? So I think they, when they do it in front of the Rockefeller Center, they either, like me, they don't do it in the Bronx or in Queens or whatever. They do it again in another city, in front of the city hall or in front of the opera or whatever. So, you know, this is why it is important to have this decision, to take this decision. It's not about to find out something. It's about to make an affirmation. But my affirmation is, yes, I do art, I do monument, and I want to do it with residents, with people who live right there. And it can, that's my affirmation, it can implicate them. I have a, a question about, uh, I, I have been a big fan of your work for many, many years and you have always been using this uh, brown, very cheap plastic uh, uh, tape to cover a lot of different stuff. And it is in a sense a very ugly material, uh, very cheap, uh, but you use it extensively all over the place, even now when you have I guess bigger funding and could use more expensive material. It's like you cover sofas and you cover a lot of stuff with this brown brown tape. Could you speak a bit about that? Because it's very significant. Yeah. Uh, um, it's a decision I took uh, to work with materials. Uh, they are universal. I call it universal because all over the world you can take it and know it. I took this decision because there is a kind of urgency in this material. For example, 
uh, at the airport, even at the airport, you can buy it because sometimes uh, a suitcase broke, and then they can uh, handle, you can fix it with this. I like it for this, and therefore I use it. So, of course, uh, this gives the answer to your question in a way on, on one behalf or on the behalf of the money. It's not about because when I have money, I do it uh, uh, with another material. You call it ugly. I call it really practic practical. For example, no, look, for example, at Flamettenel, I covered the sofas with this thing. And it's really practical. For example, when you, you put uh, wine over or whatever, you just you clone, clean it, and perhaps you make more, more on it. And also, it gives a kind of, uh, it gives a kind of uniform of them, and uniformity, and uh, unity of them. And that, therefore, it's also good. And to me, it's a philosophical question because the materials I use, I use it for their inclusive, inclusivity. Because I thought always uh, that these materials, they, they can include by the materials somehow photocopies, wood, tape, silver paper, whatever. So because nobody is exclu excluded by the material, that's for important. And then, of course, you can also critically say, yeah, but it's too much always this paper, or somebody says it's a brand, you know, Thomas here from brand or whatever. But yeah, but therefore I have to pay. I have to pay, and I'm ready to pay. I'm ready to pay the sellers, yeah, yeah, he use only this. When somebody think I use it just because I'm stupid, yeah, I mean, by the way, I'm stupid, but you know, I'm stupid enough to use it, to have my brand, that's not my problem. But I have to pay to use it. That's for sure. Like us, every artist has to pay for his work or her work. We have to pay. And it's not because somebody said, yeah, you can change something. You can change it. Because I decided I love the material. But when I say not in a hope, I don't hope in a selfish love. I love it. It's like a commitment, I think, for this material, for its urgency, for its practicability, for its universal, universality. And therefore, it's a material uh, that I use. For example, one example, you know, um, you have a car, and you are, uh, there is a, there is, um, to look back, what's called, the, you know, the mirror to look back is broken. People take tape to tape it. And if you observe how they do it, I'm fascinated by it, how they do it. They, they do it obsessively. They put too much tape. <laughs> I like it a lot. It's, yeah, you can laugh. No, of course it's fine. But it's, it's this what I'm interested in, to do too much. You know, to overdo it. And therefore, in doing this, I have to pay for it. And uh, 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 this is, I think, something constitutive in art, that no artist, no one, I don't know who an artist has not to pay for his work, you know, or her work. Uh, at one point, you have to stand there and say, okay, you know, uh, even when you call, your name is another name, Thomas Hirschel, you have to pay for it. And me, I have to pay for it. And I'm ready. Uh, yeah, I would just like to add something. Uh, something. There is some point, for example, the first work, uh, that you know my work, you mentioned. But when I get, went, to, for example, in the Bronx, something about credibility of myself. So it's important that the people there who knows, who don't know my work, who don't know Thomas Hirschhorn, of course, who know. So that it's important that they know I don't do it also, not because it's the Bronx, like this. I do it also in a gallery or even in a museum. That's very important. And therefore, by the way, it's, it's interesting to work also with people in public space because then you can say, look, I made this exhibition in a gallery or in a museum, and it looks a little bit the same right there. You know, it's not I, I cannot adapt it. I don't want to adapt it on the situation. I want not to adapt. And therefore, for example, the tape is a good uh, tool to, to to give this over. Maybe you can tell us briefly about. Uh, yeah, I made this. Do um... so you have a question here? Uh, hi. Um, yeah, uh, um, I, as 
suppose myself as well as a lot of other people in this room have been following your work for a very long time. And, and there is an article that was written a long time ago about your work um, by Claire Bishop. And uh, she was defending your work against uh, Maria Lind in relation to the fact that uh, that uh, there was inherent exploitation within the Thai Monument um, project because of the fact that uh, you're using uh, was it Turkish workers at that point in order to kind of develop the Thai Monument. I don't agree with Claire Bishop in, or with Maria Lind in her criticizing. Uh, um, her criticism of the of the Bataille monument, but what it did was it spelled out like this paradox between uh, socially engaged work and um, the inherent like exploitation that might exist with any socially engaged artistic practice. So for me, I, for me, I was always I've always been interested in this possibility of entering into socially engaged work but at the same time um, trying to remove the authorship of the actual author as far as possible and still have the, the work still function as, as a, um, a work unto itself. And uh, for me, it's been a long-term question in my mind and the opportunity to ask you in person how you might feel about this point is, uh, um, I'm putting it forth to you right now because I'm very interested in what you might feel about that. And maybe, I'm not too sure if you've actually read that article or not. No, first of all, not. But okay, I know these kind of uh, critics. And what can you say? Uh, you know, uh, they are based on, to me, in the really end of this belief. They're based on not belief that art can really change thing. And uh, therefore, I understand this kind of critiques and uh, uh, they, they arise and you have to face them. But uh, they cannot, they cannot, I cannot really, uh, you know, I cannot really uh, take them more than as a, a kind of a cynical way not to engage with the hardcore questions of today. Uh, is it possible that there is a few people who understand things and the others are excluded by, you know, or can they also be involved with art? Even when sometimes perhaps there are critical situations happen or complex and also even paradoxical situations happen. And, uh, this is, uh, you know, what, what I told you also when I wrote uh, the skeptical one. Uh, I know it's so good in the art world, you know, the skeptical one. Uh, the whom who goes not out of the house or even of the room with the, with, the, with the computer. Because they know they will be disappointed by the reality. It will be not like this, it will be much more harsh. So, you know. To me, this is an argument I cannot really take from serious. I understand it because so a lot of people need to be protected in a way, or self-protected. You know? The luxury people, for example. But also, sometimes the theoretician people, they need this kind of protection. But to me, uh, it is about go out, open the door, go out and to be not disappointed. I wrote it also from the reality which is much harder and harsh than you thought. And uh, therefore, uh, I have no, you know, it's going to be criticized because it's, it must be like this. That's also what I said, to do a work which could be criticized. It's, it's about what you're doing. It's about what, that means you do really something necessary, you know, which I, I call a critical purpose. You do really something which goes to the point, you know, to the point. And of course, me as an artist, uh, I am in the movement. I see it as a movement. And if I don't see it as a positive movement, movement, and also, 
if I don't go to, you know, if I don't think forest houses or but I wanted all other projects I did with people, with residents. In the end, it was a positive move for all those of us. I would not stay here and make this lecture. Yeah. But I also want to keep, no, no, to not have a defense on it, to say that, that's it. Yeah. But I do, you count on me, I do my work based on competence of equality. <laughs> and not only a theoretical competence, but somebody who has to be uh, uh, worked out and uh, defended and asserted every moment. Thanks. Should we take like one or two more questions? Yes, you have, is there one more question still down here? So would they like, does anyone like to do the final question? No? Maybe I'll just ask them one final question. It was in relation to the tape. So I was thinking of tactility and uh, to what degree that plays an important role in your work. And so if it, also looking at um, a kind of non-exclusive public, maybe obviously the internet or something that's not like non-tactile would be a good way of reaching a non-exclusive public, but why that wouldn't be possible in your work perhaps. No, I mean, I made the, 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 the tape is, is not only tactile, it's also a call. It's also a form, um, it's, it's seen, it's made, you have not to touch it. It's not for that I use it, and by the way, um, uh, there was a try for me also to to, uh, to have in Flamme but also in uh, Gramsci Monument, uh, the internet, but uh, the internet not uh, in a yeah, in a, in a, in a, a, a Facebook way, you know, as a kind of uh, uh, possibility to to load or to, to cover or to, to load with material, which I did. So to me, uh, you know, the, the, the social medias, uh, I was happy, for example, that the social medias, a lot of people used the social medias in order to speak uh, about my work. But me, uh, what I try to do uh, is to fix, to have, to fix, and therefore, by the way, I like the title of this space, Landmark, to make a landmark, that's the landmark, uh, uh, to give the body to be there, to give the time to be there, right there, and to me, this is not an old-fashioned thing, it's, a, it's another thing, it's, uh, by the way, a lot of people do it today, today in Paris, uh, whatever. They are there at one point because they understand that their body counts. Their body counts. Your presence counts. Be there. Give the body. Uh, before you speak about politics, give the body. I give the body. I go there. I go again, there, etc. Therefore, um, um, uh, this is a up Facebook word. Not anti Facebook, but the up Facebook cry. You know, to, be, to insist on the importance of the of the moment and the yet. Well, thank you very much, Thomas. Thanks a lot, Thomas. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.